Welcome to Purpose 360. I'm Carol Cohn. And I'm Chris Noble. And we're on a journey to explore the brightest and most innovative minds and initiatives in social purpose. Today, companies and brands must stand for something meaningful. They have to have a social purpose and bring that purpose forward to their employees, their customers, and their community. Each episode, we're talking to leaders at Fortune 100 companies, global brands, social enterprise startups, NGOs, and everything in between. We'll be taking a deep dive to learn how they are integrating purpose into their organizations. To benefit both business and society for enduring impact. Join us. Welcome to Purpose 360. I'm Carol Cohn, and today we have a delightful guest with us, Jonathan Proper, and he is our first social enterprise to be on the show. So, Jonathan, welcome to Purpose 360. Carol, thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to be here today. Well, I am thrilled to have someone whose background um, is similar to my youth. Um, And Jonathan's going to talk about cotton yarn and the cotton wash business that he had with his mom in a couple minutes. And my grandfather owned cotton mills um, in the, gosh, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and such in uh, North Carolina, South Carolina and Alabama. So we are twined together in our current I suppose, interests and our past interests. So um, very, very kind of uh, serendipitous um, alignment. So I always love to start a show by the numbers. And so Jonathan is CEO of a company, of a Philadelphia-based company called Drops. It's a detergent company. It's a detergent company that has purpose at its center. And I love to share numbers. So while their sales are a secret, because they are a you know, an emerging social enterprise. They have sold over 50 million pods for our laundry. So that's a terrific number. Um, But here's some other great numbers. Drops are 100% recyclable package, as well as that package is compostable. And that's really, really important as our landfills are growing totally filled. They also provide to a consumer zero cost of shipping. So don't worry, it can be sent to you on a monthly basis at certain levels. Um, They have some wonderful scale and momentum and wind at their back in the business. The first quarter in 2019 exceeded sales for the entire year of 2017. Woo, so that's really, really great. And they serve over 50,000 customers. And I know that's growing leaps and bounds. So again, congratulations, Jonathan. So let's start with, we always ask, what is your purpose with your company, Drops? Well, that's a great question. Uh, we feel s- the consumer can have it all. There doesn't have to be a compromise. You can have convenience. You can have sustainability. You can have a good price and uh, and safe and respect safe and and uh, responsible products and. Um, uh, uh, there's no reason to have to compromise any of the things that you need. So that's our really core core belief. Okay, that's the company's belief. But what is your personal purpose? Um, you've been involved in a number of social um, entrepreneurial adventures that are very sustainably driven. So, you know, why are you doing this personally? You know, it's interesting you ask that question. You know, this is um, Earth Month. Right. And Earth, Earth Day, Earth Day uh, was started 49 years ago. And uh, I remember sitting on the hill in Belmont, uh, on Belmont Hill in Fairmont Park in Philadelphia, celebrating the first Earth Day. And it was a beautiful day. Every politician was there. There was no, you know, blue state and red state in terms of in those days, in terms of of the earth. and. Um, you know, sort of that that became sort of a uh, the basis for me and sort of a, my personal sort of mission towards um, uh, doing sustainable things and and keeping our earth around for a long time. Well, that, that's very very commendable. Actually, 
that Earth Day, I was in Sedona, Arizona. And I can, as you remember, where I was, and I was going to a fair showing um, very early on sustainable products and how you could live a sustainable life lifetime. A lot's changed in 49 years, but not too soon for your product. So what inspired you to develop Drops Pods? Well, we had this great detergent that uh, for cleaning cotton, and it was a concentrated very concentrated detergents. So we always, uh, you know, sort of felt that you didn't, the water was in the washer and you uh, only needed to bring a detergent to your, uh, to the washer. And, um, uh, but at the same time, it still had a fair amount of water in it. And I saw this technology in another vertical and I said, that was my, that was my aha moment. I said, let's take all the water out of this product and turn it into a pod. And at that point, we said, this is um, not a horse and buggy with a motor. This is a car. So we... <laughs> so, I'm a horse person, so you got to watch those horses. Right. So um, we had to rename it. And so we renamed it DROPS, and, and it was an acronym, right? Dissolvable, ready-to-use, organic, pre-measured pods. And, mm. but, but, but ironically, some people thought it was, I was just dyslexic. <laughs> because the D, if inverted, would be a P, right? And that would be props. And that was my nickname in high school was props. So okay. all of my high school friends thought that, you know, I just sort of turned the P upside down and came up with the the uh, the product name. But, you know, it the, it is a verb and a noun, you know? Uh-huh. And so it is something you drop, and it's only a drop, and that's all you need to um, sort of clean your clean your clothes. So okay, and and this is Drops is not your first company that you had a sustainability focus. Um, you know, textiles and cleaning them um, has been woven into your DNA through your mom. And so, can you talk a little bit about Lenore, um, Proper Schwartz, and? She started the Conshohocken Cotton Company and made apparel using a patented cotton yarn. And so tell us a little bit about that. That, you know, that kind of was the precursor to drops. Cotton yarn was never used really in fashion. It was considered the dirty fiber. And then Perry Ellis came along and put it on the map with his hand knit sweaters. And no one knew how to care for those hand knit sweaters. They thought, oh, you know, your, your sweater will look better washed in. In a, in a product that you just hand wash and lay flat to dry. The problem with cotton is that never, you can't lay it flat to dry. It never dries. It will mildew. And so, uh, we developed this, this product called, uh, cotton wash that would take care of that, uh, those beautiful handmade cotton sweaters. And, and Consumer Reports named it the number one in the overall cleaning quality among hand laundry detergents, which is, Phenomenal, considering I think we were all brought up on woolite. So congratulations to you. Now, now in our pre-show conversation, you said that you ultimately sold that company, and then what happened? You know, the the store. So sold sold the yarn company, and I sold it to one of those venerable companies like your family's company. It was called Standard Cusa Thatcher Company, and um, and and we sold intellectual property. Uh, patents and trademarks. The trademark was softball yarn. And three years into the royalty, the company went chapter 11. Oh, okay. and, and so um, I uh, needed to protect uh, the that royalty. So I bought the company out of chapter 11. Not the company, not my company, the company that bought my company. Sure. So we went from a essentially a, a, um, Ten million dollar company, fifty employees to a thousand employees, and um, four plants, uh, and uh, then we reorganized and bought that out of out of uh, Chapter Eleven, what's called a three sixty three sale, and yeah. reorganized and sold the the sold the company again, and then the company then one of the divisions we sold was was the Contra Hawk and Cotton division. And we sold that to a company in Canada called Spinrite Yarns. 
And then Spinrite Yarns, after that, wanted uh, me to help them sell their company. So I wound up selling my company again. Okay. All right. And yeah. and then um, we sold it to a private equity firm in what was called a recap, a recapitalization. So when we did the recap, I bought it again uh, as part of the recap along with the private equity firm. And then it went public. And we sold it again, so it's uh, it's. So you're learning about buying, <laughs> buying and selling, yeah, lots of things. Yeah, but so, it's odd to be able to sell something twice in a row. There you go. So I I always like to stop our guests when they've got some pearls of wisdom to share. So you have sold and bought and sold and bought the same company. Um, what are one or two key insights you can share with those listeners who are saying? I want to be a social entrepreneur, and I also want to, you know, keep growing. What are one or two insights? Well, when I think about my career uh, and what I've done, it's never, it's not over till you quit, and unless you quit, right? You try and surround yourself with people that are bigger than yourself, so you create a company of giants. Okay. And um, it's it's never as good or as bad as it appears in the moment. So Drops has sustainability through and through. And congratulations, you are the winner of the 2017 EPA Safer Choice Partner of the Year. So you were a really young company then. How did you feel when you won that award? That's a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, and we're very, very proud of it. Uh, uh, that award is is about not only about choosing great ingredients, but also, in terms of uh, they recognize the packaging um, that we did in the elimination of uh, water in our product. So, uh, very excited. The uh, congressman from our district in in Pennsylvania, you know, invited me to his office and and took took pictures with plaques. And so, uh, it, it was um, it makes us pretty feel special good. moment. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know, in your marketing, um, you talk about that you have lots of free of ingredients. Can you share those with our listeners? Sure. We use plant-based uh, uh, ingredients and um, we, we make it very simple. There are only five or six ingredients in our products. Some of our competitive product, competitors products have, you know, 25 ingredients. Wow. Oh, my God. You, you know, okay. And names you can't even you know, pronounced, pronounced right. right? Yeah. And um, we use, uh, there's a, an organization called Clean Ingredients that uh, tests all these products and lists those which they consider um, safe. And that that uh, organization is uh, over, overseen by the uh, EPA and the Safer Choice Program. So we use that as our guide because they have lots of resources to be able to figure out what are the best uh ingredients and then we we figured out a way to do it simply uh to get a good um a good uh, safe clean for the consumer and, and you know you're you're not a scientist by background so um i know you said surround yourself with people that are you know really smarter than you are so you know how did you de- i mean sure there's a lot of listeners who are going like i want to create a product i'm not a scientist i'm not an inventor but i have an idea how did you go about bringing the right people to the table, either full-time, part-time consultants or such, to make drops what it is today? Uh, you know, you talk to your customers and you talk to your vendors. Vendors are a great source of, of uh, inspiration. And, and, um, and then we've had some uh, chemists uh, who, we, who consult with us in helping us with our formulations. And then we use third party uh, testing to make sure that we uh, clean as well as any of the products. Our goal is, 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 is fabric care and to remove, um, remove soil. Uh, But we're, we're, we're about maintaining the integrity of the fabric. And, and so the products we've developed um, uh, keep, Clothes looking newer, uh, longer, and um, because that's also part of sustainability. Is if you buy have good clothes and and you care for them, 
uh, the less, less longer, less in the landfill. Absolutely. So, so, you know, obviously I've grown up with the orange behemoth tide and, you know, tide has their pods and um, who had the pods first? Did you have the pods first? Did they have the pods first? I'm just curious about that. Yeah, we had the pods first. We were four years prior to big laundry introducing their uh, version of our product. And so did you have a patent on the process? We did have a, a patent on, on the product, uh, actually. But, you know, with every, um, you, you add a little salt, a little, little vinegar, you can, you, you can get around. Get around it. Oh, that's, that's too bad. Okay. All right. H- having said that, um, they're a very honorable company when it comes to uh, intellectual property. Uh, uh, having, having said that, you know, when we first introduced pods, we, we took uh, from from packaging for the pods that were being used for the dishwasher. We think we thought that if we packaged our pods in a similar way, that um, uh, the consumer would understand the translation from uh, dish to <clears throat> to laundry. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then uh, you know, it's and because safety is always number one for for uh, a company. You know, we, we have a saying, safety first, quality second, production third. And um, then Big Laundry introduced their version of the pod, and there were all these unintended uh, consequences of, of children, you know, digesting them. And so we immediately, you know, uh, then had to take action. And our action was to introduce, uh, you know, as, as the innovator in the category, um, introduced uh, a bittering agent in the film so that if children were to bite into it, they would spit it out. Uh, we, we closed the window on the, on the package. We took color out of, um, out of all the pods because color doesn't clean. And of course, when you start taking things out like water and color, you then get savings and you can pass those savings onto the consumer. Right. And then we put it in a, and then we decided we, to go directly to the consumer, and then we put it in a box, mm-hmm. and that box has a special child safety lock approved by the uh, Consumer Product Safety uh, Commission. So, um, you know, these things have unintended consequences, but uh, uh, safety is, you know, obviously has to be at the top of the list when creating, when creating out other, any, any product. Yeah, and I think that, you know, a child-proof tampered box, you know, it goes to the intentionality beyond the core product itself. I love the fact, I didn't know about the bitter exterior to it that a child would spit it out. So that's brilliant. Um, So so kudos to you. Talk about a, a eureka moment. Like you went, oh my God, we're going to, you know, this company is just good. It's going to make it. And then I want you to talk about a, a real Here's a moment where you're like, oh, my God, we're never going to make it. Yeah. Um, the I guess I'll start with the one which, you know, when I say it's never over till, it, till you quit. Right. So we were on the market with with pods and other companies came out with their version and retailers, you know, said, well, what do we need drops for? We can get get this product from now other other uh, uh, suppliers, right? Brands who are yep. more well known, mm-hmm. and is it uh, you know? So at that point, do you say do you fold up your tent, right? Uh, instead, we said we're just going to take it to the consumer mm-hmm. because we have a story that's different than those products, and we have we have the most concentrated product out there, and we have the product that is the safest. We consider the safest product out there. And uh, we have the one that's most, um, you know, can be most economical for the consumer to use. Mm-hmm. And so that's when we said we just would we'll, we'll get out of all this, all the stores um, that uh, you direct. Know, and go direct to the consumer. And, you know, it, since we made that decision, um, it's, uh, you know, totally changed the business. Yeah, no looking back. No, that's great. Yeah, really. That's wonderful. Um, I'm curious, you must get a lot of consumer feedback. 
um, what's like the, the, you, the, the one piece of feedback or two that gave you the biggest smile? When people talk about drops, they, they have the word love in the sentence. Uh-huh. I love drops. I love using the drops. And, you know, it just puts chills down your body when, when you read from consumers that they love your product. That, that's wonderful. And, and congratulations, because, you know, having almost a love marked product, it's not easy to do. And, and also to have it to be a sustainable product. So, so that's really great. So let's talk about, um, how you're creating greater awareness. Now, um, you have this crazy video called The Naked Truth. And we will put links um, in our show notes uh, so that our listeners can watch it. It's hysterical. But guys, listeners, I have to warn you, Jonathan is in a starts in a bathtub with no clothes on. And we see his chest and his chest hairs. And he's just very straight on to the consumer. So and it's called The Naked Truth. And then there's other scenes in the video that's The Naked Truth. So where did that crazy idea come from? Um, we really want to know, was there really naked or was there a little covering? So tell us about that. So, we, you know, once we decided we're going to go direct to consumer, we felt we needed to have a, a statement of some kind mm-hmm. and uh, what we call an anthem video. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and so that was the um, inspiration behind behind the video. And we said, what, are, what can we do that we know no one from Big Laundry is going to do? <laughs> That's great. You're right. You, you're not going to see the guys at PNG do that. That was our thinking. And um, it really uh, it was fun doing, as you can imagine, especially there's a scene at, the, at a mailbox on the road. Right. And I've never seen so many rubbernecking <laughs> people go by as, as right. we were shooting that scene when, when we're showing how it can be delivered to your door. And, um, uh, but uh, a lot of fun. And, and what, are, what, what kind of consumer feedback did you get to the, to the naked truth? I'd say 99% uh, great. <laughs> you, wonder who the, you don't want to go to a cocktail party with that 1%. Uh-uh, they have no sense of humor. <laughs> That's good. That's great. So how else are you? So how are you reaching out to create the to really get the word out besides absolutely crazy funny? Um, you also have a workout video, which is really crazy funny. Um, and I also love the way you, you have dinosaurs and, you, you know, you show a giant jug and you say this jug, it's a dinosaur. Um, but how else are you getting the word out? Are you know, do you have a social media campaign? And so, so tell us. A uh, combination of things, you know, there, it, to get the word out, you have to use a combination of paid and earned media. Paid, of course, people were familiar with, you know, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, those those platforms. Um, but then, um, you know, there are podcasts like your like yourselves, like like what you have. Are, are are coming on uh, as as very important way to get the word out and and create awareness. Um, Google, of course, uh, AdWords and um, okay. uh, so influencers. Yeah. Um, uh, direct mail. Are there laundry influencers, or are they reaching more to sustainability influencers? There's it's a it's a combination, you know, and uh, there's. There's people who, who influence about price and deals. There are people who influence about sustainability. There are people who influence about convenience. They're, you know, and they're all, um, they're just all great. Uh, uh, you know, there used to be the world of quote endorsers, right? But everyone knew, you know, that that, that person was paid a lot to, to make statements. And I think with influencers, there's just, you know, there, there's there is a paid element, but uh, there's just a lot more authenticity to it because they their reputations are really on the line as yeah. influencers, and they're not going to recommend anything that they don't um, believe in. And it's the same way with so you, with podcasts. Yeah. You know that 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 people trust the the podcasts that they're listening to. They trust the people who are who are delivering the message. 
well, I hope hope they do with with my thirty year career. But you know, you got every single day. You got to show up. So, um, I am curious about um, staying true to your mission. Has there ever been? Again, this is a really important insight for anyone that wants to start a company um, that's truly got purpose at the center. Um, how do you stay true to the mission? Is there ever a moment where you go, well, you know, and that ingredient, it might, it could be not quite as sustainable, but, you know, have you ever been tempted not to be 100% true to your, your vision and mission? I think as, as long as we, you know, you're never going to get there 100%, but you always keep striving for the, for the 100%. So if you're, if it's always better, you know, you're, it, it's better. So you just think about, making it better each time, whatever that might be, whether it's yeah. a packaging change or a, or a uh, ingredient change or w- whatever, whatever it might be. Uh, there's no point in going uh, backwards, but if you, if you just can make it better, then um, it, uh, uh, it's, it's a true North, a true, true North. It's true, than, right. Yeah. So it's true. North. Yeah. The mirror sure. up to so, you. I mean, is it, are you, is your true north, is that guidance and that compass inside of you? Or do you also have some colleagues that work with you or customers? I mean, because, you know, some days it's really hard to stay the course. So who holds the mirror of truth up to you? I think, um, you know, the team, uh, the the board, um, uh, and the consumer. Okay. You know, you, you do something that's not right, you're going to hear about it. Okay. And have you, have you heard some like, eh, not so good emails? Someone saying, Hey, Jonathan, what are you doing? I, I don't, I don't think I've heard emails like that, but you know, we get all sorts of emails from consumers and, and they're really great because they teach us more about ourselves. And, um, you know, cause as a small company, we don't have all the resources, um, uh, that some of the large companies, do yeah. and so they can be a source of information that we don't have uh, as a way of making us better. Okay, so you mentioned your board, and so for you know social ventures, social entrepreneurs, choosing a board um, is really important. So how did you select your various representatives? Um, how many individuals do you have on the board? How often do you meet? It's a small. It's a small board. Uh, it's uh, people I've known. There are only four of us on it. People I've known quite a long time. Um, we uh, have, you know, monthly calls and quarterly meetings. And do they ever, are they part of that holding the mirror of consistency and your sustainability true north? Do they, you know, question you a lot? Uh, they hold many mirrors in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sure. Financial mirrors, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's turn to um, reducing single-use plastics because that is the hottest issue right now, um, like one of in sustainability. And I know that in one of your videos, you know, you show undersea, you show the amount of plastic in the ocean. Um, what role should the home care category play in addressing single-use plastics? It, it should be playing a huge role. Uh, uh, same with personal care. It is this it is such a big problem and at the same time, such a great opportunity. And so as we look to the future in terms of products we develop, we would uh, hope to develop products that are in containers that you can, can be reused. I always like to ask, who do you admire for having you know, a purposeful brand or company, uh, perhaps in your space or not in your space, and why do you admire it? Uh, Stonyfield Farms, I love. Uh, uh, they describe themselves as a 25 year overnight success. And we, we've had Gary on the podcast. So I'm thrilled that you love him. Um, we're going to send our listeners and you can go listen to, to, um, Gary's if you haven't. So that's great. Stony field. Yeah. Gary's, he's a very funny guy too. Uh, uh, union square hospitality. Okay. Uh, what I love about them, they're, you know, they're known for shake shack, uh, of course, but their first restaurant, Union Square Cafe, they had for 10 years before they opened their second restaurant. So they made sure that they got it right. And they, and they have a, you know, they care about um, their employees, their customers, their community, 
their vendors and their investors in that order. And that's a sort of a good, um, that's a good order of, of things. Uh, I love Patagonia, uh, you know, all about sustainability and making things uh, that last for life. And we hope drops will help those products uh, maintain their integrity for life as well. Uh, spring free trampoline. Uh, I don't know if you oh. know that company. No, don't know those guys. Safety is number one. Uh, spring big, free trampoline. Yeah, it's a original. I had a trampoline as a kid. Yeah, you know, the injuries. Try, I tried trampol- to do it like the gym- gymnast. I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, but uh, safety is number one. For that company, it's completely uh, in their uh, DNA. And also they had an experience where uh, they were Costco was their main customer, and Costco decided they didn't want to sell trampolines anymore. So they pivoted and, you know, went direct to their consumer. So Okay. Um, so we always like to close with asking, what are two or three core insights that you want to leave, um, you know, someone who wants to be an entrepreneur, they want to create a purposeful company at the core. Um, so what would you suggest to them as they're thinking about starting out or they're on the journey already? Just reiterating, I think what I said before, that um, it's not over till you quit, that you should surround yourself with people who are bigger than you to create a company of giants. Uh, it's And that it's never as good as or as bad as it appears in the moment. <laughs> that, that, that's great. And so what haven't I asked you? What would you love to close on? The consumer can have it all. You can have convenience. You can have eco-friendly products. You don't have to, you shouldn't have to overpay for them. And we're going to continue to try and um, give all those things uh, to the to the consumer. I want to thank you, Jonathan. I wanted to congratulate you on the success of Drops today um, in learning more about your background and your passion and your vision. Um, I think that as consumers and as um, citizens, that we're really lucky to have you in the world. And we trust that our listeners um, will be inspired by your journey. And, you know, I love the fact that uh, you don't give up and you keep going forward and that your innovation um, has been extraordinary. So I want to thank you on behalf of our listeners and the next generation and the earth. And I want to end this podcast with I'm Carol Cohn. This is Purpose 360. And I want to ask all of our listeners, what is your purpose? Purpose.